Hey, my dear friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're out here in the desert looking at the 2021 Subaru Forester Touring. Fully loaded model, so I'm going to show it to you inside and out. Take it for a drive both on and off the road. And then I'm going to tell you what I really think. All right, folks, getting started here with our walk around. This is the fully loaded Subaru Forester Touring model. Quite a few trim grades, five to be exact. This one prices out at about $25,000 for a base model. And as we have this one, about $35,000. And so there's about a $10,000 gap between low and high as you look at what you can spend on this vehicle. Now, the Forester, actually one of the first models from Subaru that really sort of got the butch treatment, as it were, when they started sort of moving away from being cars to SUVs a couple decades ago. And looking at this one, you can really tell this has more of an SUV persona because of its tall greenhouse, its tall silhouette. And even though it is sort of low to the ground like a car on the bottom side, you see a really tall front end. Looking over the hood, a lot of sculpting. And one of the nice things about this is even though it is a taller crossover SUV type vehicle, when you sit behind the wheel, your seating position is such that you can see over the hood and you have a nice feel for where your perimeter is. Looking at the front, one thing I want to point out is the LED adaptive headlights. Now these, well a lot of vehicles out there reserve these for the top trim grades. These are standard from the base model all the way up to the top. A nice bonus because they do work quite good at night and they've got a great daytime signature. We do have on this model a lot of bright work there on the front end and LED fog lights down in the lower fascia little skid plate element down there as well wheels on this one these are the largest wheels 18 inch wheels and they have a nice look to them and they sort of sit back in from the tire side edge so you're less likely to scrape those things up if you really go off-roading or get them too close to a curb looking down the side you can see that this has some pretty substantial black plastic trims on the rockers as well as the wheel wells from the rear three quarter view, you can see the really tall profile that this has, which is accentuated by the roof rails. And looking at the rear spoiler, a built-in spoiler that gives it sort of a concave look in that rear window area. This rear lift gate is power operated. You can use the key fob or buttons, and that's both up and down. It's great for when you're at the grocery store. And most vehicles in this class now have that, almost not worth even noting anymore. Tail lights on this one fully loaded. We have the LED combination lights. And as we look down to the lower fascia, pretty plain, not necessarily overdone. It really sort of fits with the style of this vehicle and you've got an exhaust tip sticking out over there on the right side. The interior of the Forester is very similar to other Subaru models. In fact, it shares a lot of the same parts and pieces and components, yet with a slightly different twist. For instance, if you sat in an Impreza or a Crosstrek, you're gonna find this all quite familiar. Is that a bad thing? No. This is actually a very well put together interior. The dash, the materials, the overall design, very good. Now, it is a little bit retro and, well, what I mean by that is if you'd sat in a Subaru or any other vehicle 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, you'd see a lot of the same design elements in terms of layout and things like that. And primarily what I'm talking about is this center stack with the smaller screen and the split screen up on top. That actually goes back almost 20 years. Not a bad thing. It's just something that Subaru has stuck with for some time while other automakers have gone with larger screens and things like that. What we do have here is something that's quite functional nonetheless. The center console, for instance, is very simply and practically laid out. There's a nice cubby down in the center, though not quite large enough for most phones. The gear shift is in the center and the drive mode's just behind it with the switches for the heated seats and the parking brake. Cup holders are down low and you've got the opening center console storage here. One thing I did find out in my week with it is that these cup holders are nice and deep, which is good for most cups, but if you have big gas station cups, they tend to hit on the front of this center console top and they don't quite fit in there so good. These leather seats in the Touring are actually very comfortable. They do fit well. Fully power operated here for the driver's seat and I do have heated seats. And the seating position here is one that I found that I can sit here and enjoy this all day long on the road. As I sit here and look forward, steering wheel with paddle shifters, plenty of controls. Subaru does a good steering wheel that's very easy to figure out all these controls and use them without looking. 
The instrument cluster ahead of me is a very simple two dial layout with a small center screen. Again, sort of 10 years ago, not the latest greatest thing you're going to see out there with some of the competitors. One of the things that really sets this apart as I was talking about on the outside is the outward visibility. As you can see, I've got a very tall greenhouse here. Big tall windows means lots of visibility and you can see down across the hood. Very rare in today's automotive landscape. I absolutely love the back seat of the Subaru Forester. I mean, look at this. There's so much space back here. Leg room. These seats set for my height about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, with my boots on. Just plenty of space and a good seating height too. My knees aren't perched up. It feels very natural, though the seat is a little bit flat and is one you sit on, not in. It's still quite comfortable and would be good for a long road trip. Plenty of amenities back here. Heated seats here on the Touring in the back. Two 2.1 amp charging ports, always good for your devices. Seems like your passengers always have a dead phone, at least mine do. This seat, as you'd expect, does fold down in a 60-40 split. Gives you almost nearly perfectly flat low floor back there, and I love the big rubber mat they supply here in the Subaru. Underneath that floor, as you would expect in an SUV, is a spare tire, which is great because I plan to go out in this thing and cut a tire open on a rock, and I want to be able to get back to cell service without having to march and walk and hope to God it's not too hot or too cold. When it comes to rating this interior, it's actually very well done. The materials are good. Practicality for the most part is good, though some of its competitors do offer a little bit more storage space, but uh, there are quite a few features here that you get for your money. A few things missing here and there, but overall I think it's a good place to be. Four and a half out of five stars. The infotainment system in the Forester Touring is the top of the line with Harman Kardon audio, 8-inch screen, and this is a system that's very similar to what I've rated in other Subarus. It works very well, it is simple to use, it's got good graphics, it's got hard controls, volume and tuning knob, as well as buttons that you're going to use to navigate some of the main top level menus. I love that. We don't always want to be fighting with the touch screen and hunting and pecking around while on the road. Also, audio controls on the steering wheel. Audio quality, exceptional from the Harman Kardon. Connectivity, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, of course, and you can plug in down there. And it even has a CD player. Go figure, that's pretty rare in today's auto market. The one thing I would complain about here, though, is the visibility with all of the lighting, the big glass that we've got here. There's a lot of glare across that shiny plastic screen. It's not shrouded like even that top screen is. That's perfect, but if they could shroud this like a lot of cars could, uh, that would be a lot more visible during the daytime when you've got a lot of different light sources fighting for your ability to focus on that. This infotainment system gets four out of five stars. Now, before we get out on the drive, I've got to talk to you about some of these safety features that this car has. Now, safety features are good. Subaru has pretty much everything that's available on the market, and they've got their own eyesight system, which uses cameras up here to read the road and sort of push you back onto the lane if you're not staying in the middle of it. It's got blind spot warning. It's got forward collision mitigation. It's got backup collision mitigation. It's got all of these features. Um, and then it's got this additional one here on the Touring uh, that's with the eyesight called driver monitoring. It's kind of creepy. A lot of these warning systems that this has that are good things for the most part are really oversensitive and so I want them shut off. The problem is, is most of them turn themselves back on every time you start the car. So every time I get in the car, uh, before I go for a drive, just for my own peace and sanity, I have to go through this checklist and shut these things off. So I have to reach up here turn off the lane keeping, I have to reach up here, turn off the crash mitigation, which is sad because it's just overly sensitive. A lot of cars aren't that way. And then I have to reach over here and I have to turn off the auto start stop system because that drives me bonkers. I have to turn off the blind spot warning because it's overly sensitive and also the eyesight because I don't like my car telling me to keep my eyes on the road or my car telling me that, um, you know, I just need to pay attention. Now that I've got everything set the way I want it, let's take this thing for a drive. Now we're gonna start a drive today out here on the dirt road, desert washboard road, just outside of Phoenix, beautiful day for it. And I'm doing this because this is a car that markets itself as the adventure car, right? It's an SUV, it's a crossover, Subaru, Forester. This is where this car should be at home. So we're gonna start right out here and see how at home it is. 
Now the desert washboard road is a place that it's not necessarily hardcore off-roading, but it's a great way to see how well built the car is, how well designed and engineered the suspension is to handle a rough road, like if you're out in the mountains going to a place to hike, camping, whatever. What I'm finding out so far is that uh, it's a pretty solid chassis, pretty stiff. The suspension has enough compliance that I'm not being beat to death on this rough road. And the other thing that I look for is, you know, do I have rattles in the chassis? Do I have rattles in the interior? And yes, yes on both. I'm finding that I've got a lot of rattles here on the interior trim, especially one coming from the dash over there. And throughout the chassis and structure here, everything's just kind of jiggling and rattling. And I tend to like to see something a little bit more solid. But this is on the lower end of the price scale when it comes to off-road vehicles. So it's to be expected to have a little bit of noise, vibration, and harshness. I do find that the suspension does bottom here and there when you hit some big bumps. And when it does bottom, it tends to crash and, and be a little bit on the uh, abrupt side. Again, that gets to rubber and damping, and that's something that in my past experience with Subaru, they don't have a lot of emphasis on. When you hit the bottom, uh, you're gonna feel metal. Now, obviously, this has stability control, which all cars have, but this also has, for off-roading and for slippery surfaces, it has the drive mode selector down here at the bottom, which has various selections of what they call X mode. Works very good to really make sure that you're getting traction to all four wheels in a very controlled manner if you're in a slippery situation, rocks, sand, mud, snow, whatever. And today I'm not necessarily testing that, but having done it in Subarus before, uh, it doesn't disappoint. The stability control actually does a pretty good job of keeping this feeling like you're not going to fly off the road when you throw it into a gravel curve at speed. It controls the pitch and yaw up to a point, but it does give you confidence. Now it's time to take it on the pavement and see how it's going to feel for 90% of the time most people are gonna drive this. Now having driven this thing all week, mostly in the city and on the highway, I found that this does have a nice quiet ride out on the highway, very civilized. And even though we do have a higher seating position because of the way this car is designed with its boxer engine and the lower center of gravity in that way, this does have some pretty confident handling out here on a curvy road. In the city, I found that over things like speed humps, potholes, things like that, it does have a nice solid feel that um, makes it feel like a quality item. But as you can tell, it's had a nice quiet demeanor out here on the highway, very little wind noise, and the steering has a nice light feel. Its on-road manners are very good. Off-road manners are good, though it does start to show the fact that it is really more of a car than an SUV when it comes to noise, vibration, and harshness. So overall, chassis gets four out of five stars. Now let's get to powertrain. This has a 2.5 liter boxer engine, as I've mentioned, and that is a flat four, sits down low in the front. It's just something Subarus have. This has 182 horsepower, 172 pound-feet of torque, and is mated to a continuously variable transmission. Being in the Touring, this has an extra feature of seven-speed manual control. There's paddle shifters here. And while it doesn't have real gears, it gives you simulated shifts so you can have a sportier feel if you're out here having some fun. Now the question I always like to ask in any of these tests is how does it go? Let me get to a stop here, nobody around. It's trying. And 60. So. You know, this isn't meant to be a fast sports car. It feels a little bit leisurely, and yes, under full acceleration, the CVT is a CVT. You don't get that gear shifting feel. You don't get any of that normal traditional feel that you get with a regular transmission, but it does work very well, and they have proven very reliable for Subaru. And really what it's about for them is fuel economy. And to that, this is rated at 26 MPG city, 33 highway, and 29 combined. In my week with it, however, in city and highway driving, I only managed about 24, so quite a bit less than what the EPA has it rated at. 
The other thing about this powertrain that does need to be noted compared to some of the competitors is the fact that it can be a little bit noisy, a little bit rough when it comes to the noise vibration harshness. The Subaru Boxer engine is not the smoothest engine on the market compared to some of the inline fours. In the big picture though, this is a powertrain that is competitive on most of the checkboxes out there in the marketplace. I give it four out of five stars. There's no question the Subaru Forester has a lot of value in this particular category and it certainly stands out as being unique in a lot of ways. And so when I look at value and how it compares to a lot of the vehicles out there, I can tell you that it really stands out in design, first of all. It sits different, it drives different, you feel different in it than most of the competitors. It's really hard to go apples to apples with any of them. I can tell you, however, that Vehicles like the Ford Escape, the Ford Bronco Sport that I've recently tested, this is far better in every way, I must say. And when you look at the RAV4, the Honda CRV vehicles that are sort of more in this category, uh, those are vehicles you can really compare this thing to in an apples to apples way if you're out there test driving a number of vehicles. That said, one of the things Subaru really hammers is safety. Now, all the safety systems that this has, I found to be a little bit annoying, a little bit over parental, but Frankly, 90% of the Subaru customers out there love that stuff. So, you know, I'm sort of an outlier in that way. I'm type A. I don't like ninny nannies and being henpecked to death by my car. But some people love that stuff. And if you do, Subaru's got you covered. So when I look at pricing, $35,000 fully loaded. You can spend a lot more on quite a few of the competitors out there. And this does start out around $25 for the base model. I think it has a decent level of features, though there are a few things missing that you can get for the money in some of the other competitors. I put value at four out of five stars. When you put that in with everything else we've already talked about, we're at four out of five stars for the review. So there you go, the Subaru Forester Touring. Now, if you like the test drive you just saw, I invite you to see my latest one right there, or better yet, click down there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. By the way, stay tuned.